Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for another review. And this is going to be the final review for this, well, I guess until the next four years of the USA track and field Olympic trials uh, as it has concluded today. Um, this is technically day eight, but day 10, according to Peacock. And this review should not be too long because this is all final. So we're, we're wrapping it up. We're wrapping it up. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this, get things squared away. And when I tell you this was pretty exciting to watch because trial records were breaking left and right when it came to the track aspect of things. Field, um, I'm not as sure about that because, you know, my strength is track, not so much on the field side, but I am going to go over all the winners of today and I'll just go in order of the event. So um, today, the first event that occurred was the men's hammer throw and um, Daniel um, um, halts one and apparently he's like the main guy. Um, he already does have the Olympic standard, and he also hit his season's best um, with um, his throw. And um, then we have another gentleman, um, Rudy um, Winker, um, Winkard, um, who ended up getting second place, and then Justin Sanford um, with um, third place. But the person in third place does not have the Olympic standard, so... Um, I would assume he either has to hurry up and compete in another event or he has to wait for um, the world points um, for the basically the Olympic committee to decide based upon um, his rankings. Um, so there's that. Um, OK. The next event that was concluded was the uh, women's pole vault and the favorite Katie Moon did get in, but she did get second place. She did not win. Um, but she is still the favorite to take us home with the Olympics because she is, a she is in a former, she is a former Olympian. Um, the person who won was Bridget Williams. Um, I believe she has competed in the world stage before, but she has not been an Olympian before. And currently she is unsponsored. I would assume or hope that this win will help her get sponsored. And then the person in third place who actually ended up getting the Olympic stand standard with this event um, was um, Britt um, King. So, or Bryn King, Bryn King. And they're, a college, um, they're from college. They actually got their personal best in this event, which again, got them the Olympic standard. So that is going to be your team for the women's pole vault. Um, next, um, we have the men's high jump. And um, this one is a little bit in the air. So the winner, Shelby um, McWing, um, he does have the Olympic standard and he's definitely going but second and third place do not have the Olymp the Olympic standard. But the person who actually kind of was the favorite, um, Juvon Harris, did get fourth place. So he he, <coughs> he finished just right outside the bubble. But he, he could still potentially be on the Olympic team, depending on how things go, because he is the only other person that does have the Olympic standard on this team or, you know, who competed and he was just outside the bubble. So he, if there's a question mark with who else is going besides Shelby, Shelby's a clear winner. And then the others is wait and see. Um, and you know, you already know what I said about that. And I am going to go ahead and post the Olympic standard on here right now, because with, Really, the Olympic standard thing is really only relevant with the field events today. Um, as I mentioned, with the track events, the Olympic trials records were getting broken. So because the Olympic trial records are getting broken, you can imagine the other people were placing, had personal bests, and, you know, ran an Olympic standard, basically, which pretty much did happen. So there's that. Um, and also most people who were in the finals actually were already, already had the Olympic standards. There was also that too. 
Anyway, so then next, um, one of the last events for field was a women's um, javelin throw. And um, the clear when the clear um, favorite, the person that they've been, you know, kind of following story wise, um, Kara Winger, she actually did get second place. Um, the person who actually got first place was Maggie um, Salone Harden. And um, she had a, she hit the meet record. So she did do that. And she's the only one that place that does have the Olympic standard. Um, so uh, Madison um, Wildrout, who's also who's unattached, who got personal best, still needs to meet the Olympic standard. So I'm, again, they're going to have to wait on that. But um, Maggie Salone Harden was the only one on that was in the finals that had the Olympic standard. So <clears throat> um, it's going to be wait and see for that. I'm assuming it's still going to be um Kara Winger because I think her world rankings is enough where she would be able to just get in and also she's been to the dance before so I would assume she's in but I guess I'm not sure about the other person just because I'm not as familiar with the field events so um that does conclude all the field events and then now we'll go into all the track um finals events and there were a total of four no sorry six finals for track so We'll get into that next. Apologies. I actually almost did forget um, the men's triple jump. So um, I wanted to add that in there before we get into the track events. So the winner for the men's triple jump um, was um, Fan Ming. And he hit the Olympic standard during the trials. Um, so he's definitely going um, to the Olympics. And then the second place winner was... Um, Russell Robinson, who does not have the um, Olympic standard, so that's going to be a maybe wait and see thing. And then Donald Scott, third place, does have the Olympic standard. Um, so those two are guaranteed to go to Paris. But the trick with this one is those two are the only ones that have the Olympic standard. So it's going to be up to the committee when it comes to that as well. Anyway, I apologize. This was actually right before the women's javelin. Um, throw as far as the order of things of uh, the programming um, but anyway we'll get now into the um, track and field portion of um, the events so the first event um, track event of the evening was the men's 5,000 meter um, finals and the favorites and those that we're kind of looking for with this event was Grant Fisher Avdi Neural, um, Neural, um, Woody Kincaid, and um, Colt Hawker. Those were like the notable names that we're kind of looking at. Um, Sean McG M uh, McGordy also. And um, then the um, other person we were kind of looking at was Parker Wolf, um, who won the NCAA tournament um, just recently for this event. So those were it. So the only one that was kind of not professional. Everyone else, professional. Everyone else I mentioned were professional athletes. We we're looking for. We kind of wanted to see how Cole Hawker would fan out in this because, um, pan out with this because he is more of a. We have known him in the recent years more for the um, 15, um, 1500 meter race, and then. And his strong kick versus Woody Kincaid and his strong kick just being in both the 10,000 and 5,000 meter race. Um, this did um, start off to be a pretty fast race, but it also was a, a hot one. Apparently in Eugene, Oregon, it was in the 80s, and which is really, really hot for this type of event. Um, and so they were... They were still somehow, some way, running a very honest pace. So um, Cole Hawker was up front at the beginning, which is not normal for him. Um, and then also Woody Kincaid was up front for a minute as well, which is also not normal for him. But we understood why Woody Kincaid did that because he did not have the Olympic standard, and he wanted to keep this pace, the honest pace, for them to be able to still run that kind of a time so that if he was to execute and win, it will be within the realms of him getting the Olympic standard too. 
Um, but as it turned out, he ended up not being so much a factor and Cole Harker was also not a factor in this event. Um, what happened was we actually saw Grant Fisher finally execute his plan exactly how he wanted to execute. Um, because as uh, towards, I would say the last maybe three or four um, laps around the track, uh, we had Grant Fisher and Abdi Murrell, Murrell just pull away from the rest of the group. And so it really was a battle of who's getting third place. Um, then two were just going neck and neck towards the end. And then Parker Wolf is who got third. And he and um, Parker, Parker Wolf, the NCAA um, champion, got third, ran a personal best. Um, Abdi Nurul barely lost and got second place. Um, he act and it was neck and neck, like really, really neck and neck towards the end. And Grant Fisher ran himself to a meet record. So he broke the Olympic trials record. Um, a trials record that's been standing for some time. So that was a pretty big deal. And he killed it. And w the reason why this is a big deal is Grant Fisher throughout the years has been known for being able to run a great race all the way till the end. And then he gets out kicked. And he has clearly been working on this all off season where you haven't seen this be an issue for him in both events. So he was both the 10,000 and 5,000 winner for the men's Olympic trials. So he's going to Olympics in the double. Um, he was already going, but he's definitely going to double. Same thing with Cole Hawker. He's already going, even though he didn't, you know, did not win this event. He will just have the one event. And also same thing with Woody Concade. Concade. He did not win this event or even place in this event, like enough where he can run in this event, but he's still going to be in the 10,000. So all is well with this particular event. The next finals was the men's 800. And this was equally as interesting and fun to watch as the um, 5,000 meter race. Um, the favorites for this one was Bryce Hopper. Um, and then his training partner, who's also already in the Olympics for the 1500, um, Hobbs, um, Kessler, and then the other, and then Brandon Miller was also someone to look out for, and then Clayton Murphy. So those were like the favorites and it, towards the end for this, it came down to, um, all three of them. They were pretty much so the three that I'm mentioning is Bryce Hopper, um, Kess, um, Hops Kessler, and um, Brendan Miller, or Brandon Miller. Um, they were kind of back to back to back when it came to winning. Um, and so this is going to, and they all have the Olympic standard. And Bryce Hopper set, uh, he broke the uh, trials record, so he killed that. Ran a personal best. Same thing with Hobbs Kessler. He ran a personal best. And, um, but Brandon Miller, this is going to be his first time um, going to the Olympics. Um, is, and the other two have, and also competing in world stage. Because I don't believe Brandon Miller has competed in world stage. So it was a pretty big deal. Um, it was a very quick race because it is a much quicker race. Um, Clay Murphy, he did not uh, perform to... I mean, he still did decent. He ran season's best, but this was, you know, he, he was definitely outside the bubble when it came to this. But those were, those are your three. They're going to the Olympics. And yeah, um, Bryce Hopple and Cops Kessler, you could definitely tell that them being training partners helped a lot with this race. And this is actually not going to be the last. Well, this has been, I, I've noticed with this Olympic trials, especially that's been a pattern and we're going to see more of that um, in other events um, this evening as well. All right. The first um, women's track event for the evening is the women's um, 100 meter hurdles. And um, this was an amazing, and I mean, an amazing 
um, race. And it was not how we turned out. And the story with this race was old, the old guard versus the new guard. And I'll just, I'll just say it right away. The old guard got shut out. Everyone that's going to this Olympics is all part of the new guard. And the favorite, uh, Messiah Russell, she not only won the race very decisively, um, she set the meet record again. Yeah, you heard me correctly. Another meet record, another Olympic trials record. And so she broke Gail Deaver's record that's been standing, I think, since like the 96 Olympics. Like Gail Deaver's is like my era of watching the Olympics, like when I was a little girl. Um, and she is the world lead and the personal best. Like she killed it. And then Aaliyah Johnson um, ran second and Grace Starks ran third. And all new guards and all had very emotional responses to, you know, their interview as they, after they did what they did, but man, it was, they, they did that. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing else to say about that. They, they did what they needed to do. And that's pretty much it for that race. The next race that was also super exciting to watch was the women's um, 1500 um, meter race. And when I tell you this was actually one of the races I was looking forward to the most because I knew we had a ton of heavy hitters in this race. Like we had Nikki Hiltz, um, we had um, Emily McKay, um, L. St. Pierre, um, Sinclair Johnson, Corey McGee, Alyssa Cranny, um, Heather McLean, like all these names that I mentioned here, these are all like literally the heavy hitters of this distance. And they all, so this was probably out of all the events we were witnessing, um, I would say, honestly, trials weekend as a, I mean, this whole Olympic trials was the most stacked um, this was probably one of the most stacked events, to be honest. And it was very, it, it was exciting to watch because one thing was it did come across like El St. Pierre was just going to do what she's been doing because she decided she was going to go right up front immediately and just stay there. And then after that, then it was just like anybody's race after that. Um, unbeknownst to her <laughs> that's not how that's not that's not how that was going to end up at all i think she thought that's how that was going to go but no 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 um the others are biding their time so then um her training partner was um e emily mckay she actually ended up going coming and you know running by her too um towards the end so they were first just, you know, kind of attacking this side by side, getting it done. And then they, I think they, them two thought it was going to be between them two and Nikki Hills. They were not going to be denied though. They tried to kind of stop her from, you know, going through from the inside. So she cut around and went around them on the outside and caught them and not only caught them decisively won this race so this was a big deal for them because this was the second national championship they have won um in a row so this is a back-to-back -back title for them and of course another thing you're gonna hear me say they set the meet record <laughs> and um it was a personal best it and um not only did they set the meet record they broke <laughs> L. St. Pierre's American record because the American record was actually L. St. Pierre's for this event. And they broke it with this event, defeating L. St. Pierre. So that now, that American record now belongs to Nikki Hiltz. And again, this was a very exciting race to watch. Alyssa Cranny, even though they talk about her kick a lot, she was not a factor. She was like in sixth place. 
and the others were just kind of, you know, they're all close by, but they weren't, they weren't going to win that. Um, and a lot of personal bests towards the end of this race. It was a very fast event. And I will say this, um, I would say the 5,000 meter race out of all the races is probably the only race that maybe wasn't the best for this heat, but all these other races, clearly the heat was a good thing because the way course records were handed out, like it was nothing. It was, that was the most, I, I don't know. It was kind of, it was kind of crazy. Um, and with that being said, it's ha it's going to happen two more times because there's two more events left. So spoiler alert on that. Also, side note, I do love the fact that um, <laughs> Nikki Hiltz, they won their event on the last day of Pride. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, happy, happy Pride Month, by the way. Um, I know it's a day late, but hey is what it is um anyway so then the next event that what that the finals took place for was the men's um 400 meter hurdles and the clear favorite with this one was rye benjamin and when i tell you he was a clear favorite he was a clear favorite and then the others who were pretty notable who were favorites that i mentioned before was cj allen and I wasn't sure about Trevor Basket, but I mentioned him because I figured he would still find a way to get, get, get here. And that order of what I mentioned is literally how that happened. Um, so Trevor Basket got in there third place. Um, CJ Allen, second place. He's going to his first Olympics. Um, and hopefully with Trevor Basquette, this helps him actually get a sponsor because right now he's running um, unsponsored. And then Rye Benjamin, no one was catching him. <laughs> this this was a very dominant effort on his end. He looks like he's definitely ready for the world. He's ready for um, Carson Warholm and he's ready for um, Dos Santos. Um, because it's gonna, it, it definitely is gonna be between those three. Just based off of just looking at this, as long as everyone's healthy, that seems like that's the matchup we're gonna be seeing. I hope that's what we see. And again, <laughs> course record, but he also has world's lead right now. So they kind of all three of them have been going back and forth, leading up to the trials and leading up to this Olympics. Just pushing out world lead. So right now, Rye Benjamin has world lead. Dos Santos was the last one who had it. And now he get, um, Rye gave it right back. He's like, no, I got the world lead now. So yeah, this is going to be interesting. I'm excited for the Olympics for this event, but those are your people that are going. Okay. So the final event for this evening and the main event per se, well, it was the main event, was the women's 400 meters. And this was the Sydney McLaughlin LeBroni show and a case of who's going to be second and third. This is what it was. I mean, we knew that's what it was going to be. I don't think anyone else thought any differently, but that's how it was. And um, so the other favorite that um, did end up getting second place was Anna um, Cockrell, and she was nowhere near <laughs> Sydney. Like, no one was, um, and that's just how it is. And then um, Jasmine Jones actually got third, and Shamir Little got fourth. So Shamir Little, we were, we were concerned about her doing the flats, and so this is going to be one of those decisions, I feel, looking back, of whether that was a good idea or not. But... That doesn't necessarily mean that she won't be at the Olympics. She might end up doing the four by four in the relay because she was um, within the second half of, she was fourth place here. And I believe for the flat, she was in sixth place. So she still could technically go to the Olympics. It just would be as a, as a team and on the individual level. Dalil Muhammad, possibly the same thing because this, we did find out on this event, this is Dalil Muhammad's last Olympic trials. Um, I mentioned in a prior video before, she is kind of in the, um, towards the end of her career 
And I kind of thought that's what it was. And it indeed is that. Um, one thing that was beautiful, though, is that Al, um, when, once all three of them did what they did and won, and they had the, and I'm skipping ahead here, but I'm going to go back. Um, Anna Clock Reel, she actually did, um, along with Sydney McLaughlin, um, Lombroni, they gave her her flowers during that interview about how much she has helped with this sport for the women and how much she's coached her. Because I think Anna, I think actually Anna Cockrell is actually um, Delilah Mahalan's training partner. So I, I understand why she did that. And anyway, so Sydney McLaughlin Lombroni, she, as I mentioned, she <laughs> killed this race. She set a course record, but she also broke her own world record. <laughs> she ran a, she ran another world record time, so of uh, fifty sixty five. So this also explains why no one was catching her. Anna's second place was fifty two sixty four. Now that seems like that's only two seconds. That's not a big deal, but. For 100 meters, I'm sorry, for 400 meters, that's a long time in between. So, yeah, no, no. She wasn't being caught. Um, there was definitely a huge margin of a difference. But, yeah, that is your team for um, this, this particular um, event. And that does conclude the Olympic trials as a whole. So, these are all the people that are going to be in the Olympics. And this is, of course, health permitting assuming everything checks out everything is everything and then for those who don't meet the standards um if after being reviewed this it, it's fine for them to still proceed yes indeed these are going to be all your people for the olympics and hopefully you enjoyed my reviews for these olympic trials um i will be also reviewing the olympics um as they um come about and we have i think that happens in august i want to say so they have a whole entire month to prepare for that or towards the end of july i think it's august though um for paris um so it should be good and hopefully um again hopefully you enjoy my review um please like comment subscribe to the channel if you get anything else out of the content it's your girl sharon aka the melanin nostalgic runner oh and by the way one more thing I will be back to the regularly regularly scheduled program of doing the Get Fit With Me Presents Accountability starting next week. Um, I am still running. Um, I am trying to still, I'm running, but I'm also being smart about it because I actually did get my ankle that injured looked at and I'm not really out of the woods yet on that. <laughs> More to come, uh, I'm not, it's not hurting me more to run, but it's not getting better. And so I will be starting PT on that, but my doctor said I could still run. So I am going to continue training. I just have to be very careful about how I train. So, um, yeah, I'm going to still go over that and we'll still talk about how that is and what that's about. And I guess I'm kind of, I kind of did just squeeze in a little bit of gift that would mean for sense of accountability right here. So um, I do have a short work week this week, so I'm going to be able to get more runs in. I was out of town last week, so that kind of made it a little bit difficult. I still got some runs in, but not as much as I wanted to. And also this is a week where I'm going to start not only going to the gym again, I'm going to start swimming. Um, I have already started biking, but... We're going to try to put everything together so that towards the end of July, um, because my tri my sprint triathlon is the end of the month, swimming won't be horrible. The cycling probably won't be as good as it was last year, to be honest, um, just because my ankle kind of impacts a lot of things. Um, but hopefully the running will be better because I, I was really bad with running last year um, just because I added... I broke my toe on the other foot. So <laughs> this is the life of an athlete, but it is what it is. Anyway, I digress. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel, though, if you get anything else out of the content. It's your girl, Sharon, a.k.a. the Melon and Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.
Image, been infected with rage.